Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Renard Studios Comics, and today I am here with Christopher Mayer of Vampire Chronicles. I mean, Vampire Bloodlines from Bridgeport Chron Chronicles. Can you hear me? No. Is, I can am hear I on? now? Huh? I think I can hear you. Is everything okay? Yeah. Yeah. Everything's okay. <laughs> Sorry. Bumpy start here. Yeah, it's a little bit. We Discord just decided to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and let's we'll see if I can enlarge that screen. Okay, so uh, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about your uh, comic books. Oh, okay. Uh, well, as you said, my name is uh, Christopher Meyer, and my comic books are much being brand new to it and just really starting uh uh it's within a series that i'm calling the bridgeport chronicles and the first ones that are coming out is vampire bloodlines uh right oh shoot number four kickstarter going on right now got uh a little under two weeks left to go on that uh hoping to get to 4k by the end but if not all's good we're looking looking pretty good where we're at right now so i'm pretty happy with it right on yeah i'm happy with it too i, I it's been an, an enjoyable read and uh i love the art style too it's good stuff uh hey, uh, you know i give you props for trying to pronounce her name on your reviews and honestly i can't pronounce it worth a name <laughs> so i just call her av for short yeah and she's okay with it so that's and that's what pretty much what I've been calling her is Evie. So, and she's she's an awesome artist and quite frankly a, a sweetheart. So she's been pretty cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, so what percent is the Kickstarter at right now? Uh, last I checked, it was from my email notification. It was about two hundred and eighty percent, something like that. With a goal of. Well, the goal was initially 1200 because what, what I'm looking to do is to at least get the number set to get the, the next issue made. Yeah. And then everything else is going into making, being able to make it print and being able to send it off because where I currently work now at is actually a pretty good job. I can actually, it would be a little bit more time consuming, but I can actually do it my, uh, do pay it for myself and have it printed that way. Yeah. So, but that's why I have, when it comes through to the previous uh, uh, books, with the exception of one, it's been all Kickstarter funded. The, the reason I say the exception of one is number one, and I did that through all myself, and everyone out of the Kickstarter that bought that was helping fund number two. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I personally, I think uh, Kickstarter is more or less just a great way of getting the word out and uh, letting people know that your comic is available. Exactly. And it's, I mean, you look at Kickstarter, not just comics. I mean, you look at some of the, you know, gaming. I'm a gamer. One of the ones is uh, Bloodstain. That's where one of the, you know, it's Metroidvania. And Ega was the one that did Symphony of the Night and threw on through Castlevania when he was with Konami. And, Konami didn't want to do it. He went through Kickstarter and you look how well Bloodstain has done. I mean, that's just one example. Yeah. Kickstarter has helped a lot of people and creators throughout the time that have been around. Yeah, the ma majority of the things I've backed on Kickstarter have been either uh, comics, the huge majority, or pins, stuff like that, comic shops. Um, yeah, I've I didn't back any video games just because back then where I worked beforehand I wasn't making much so it was just pretty much nickel and dime just to survive so yeah right now what I have been backing is the comic book scene so that's what I've been acting with those that have uh, looked interesting to me as well as those that have worked with uh, in terms of cross promotion I think you know if we're gonna cross promote you gotta also about investing into it to help them out, my yeah. opinion, and you know that's how I go with it. Yeah. So first off, I would like to thank you for uh, doing this with me. This is my first time, so 
hip it seems really janky in that. That's because I'm new to this. <laughs> in fact, that as of yesterday, I didn't even have this app on my computer. And uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of your storyline, uh, Vampire Bloodlines. I'm loving it. Appreciate that. That's pretty awesome to hear. And oh, are you still there? <clears throat> yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Uh, the score is being janky. Just put it that way. Oh yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So this interview is more or less to uh, learn how how your comic came about and uh, stuff like that. So. I would like to get to know you. We are both uh, indie comics creators, and uh, so I would like to ask, what kind of employment do you do outside of comics, if it's okay to ask? If that is, it's just understand I'm not going to give the entire answer just because of where we're going to some ethics to it that oh, I yeah. have to be aware of. But what I can say is that I am currently... Uh, what they call a human service technician for a hospital. Okay. That's pretty much the gist of what I can say there. And I've been there, that's coming out around two and a half years. And before that, I worked at a Native American boarding school for 13. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, and, uh, <clears throat> and you learn, uh, stuff I like the cultures and the, legends and the stories that are told and you know, some of those have kind of helped inspire me a little bit with some ideas. Yeah. That's, you know, that's kind of helped move me forward into kind of make some stories and comics. Oh yeah. Um, it free hour wise, it, free, it gives you a lot of free time to uh, work on your comics and have a family life too. Uh -huh. It's like a life, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know how that is. Uh, yeah, with my job, which I can't really talk about them because this isn't work-related, so I, I always just say I work at Wally World, <laughs> like the amusement park from vacation. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm just a, just a janitor, basically. Cool. Yeah. So, um... As someone else, as someone who also writes a vampire comic book, uh, I'm always drawn to vampire comics, so I wanted to know what inspired you to write vampire stories. I've always been intrigued by the vampire mythos since I was a kid, just because really the whole romanticism that was behind it, and I think that comes from back in the 90s thanks to yeah. I think it was Francis J. Coppola oh yeah version. and just how that went about it, it just grew from there uh, some of my inspirations that I into my com uh, comics is not just uh, comic books I actually take from uh, well you know my you can uh, look at the title just the name Bloodlines that is actually from yeah. the game and Oh. People ask me if it's based on, you know, you know from Vampire Masquerade. Oh, it is from, the name Bloodlines I actually get from Castlevania. Oh, uh, yeah. The Sega, Gen Sega Genesis game for at least the North American version and Japanese version is called uh, Bloodlines. Uh, North uh, European version is called New Generation. So that, that, that's where you get a little bit of a Castlevania tie-in, but then they mentioned in your reviews that there's inspiration from uh, True Blood in there, which, yes, there is. Oh, I yeah. got some inspiration from them. Uh, I also got some inspiration from uh, uh, Laurel K. Hamilton's Nita Blake uh, by oh, Hunter series. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. And, uh, I got an amazing couple of compliments at my first ever convention comparing my uh, stories with Anita Blake and Mind you, it's not following through the eyes of like a, a hunter slash necromancer. It's following through a vampire and just yeah. hasn't gotten into anything that Anita's done. And that's just mind blowing to get that kind of compliment. And one other influence that I've taken to is also from a book. It's, uh, I don't know if you've heard of her, Chloe Neal, and she's got the 
the Chicago Land Vampire series. No, I haven't. So it's, well, it, first off, I'll just say this. I didn't read it. It's a audio book that I listened to. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed every bit of those stories that she has made, and those are pretty awesome in my opinion. So, if, uh, you guys, if anyone's looking for a good uh, just regular book to read or audio book to listen to, I would suggest uh, looking into uh, Chicago Land Vampires. That's actually pretty good, I think. Right on. Um, so, tell me about your team. How did you come across your creative team on uh, Vampire Bloodlines? Oh, this is going to be an interesting story because I first started, it was just meant to write as a hobby. My hobby is <laughs> when you when you go on DA, you first look at some of my original stuff. You realize how bad it is. But then I come in, coming down to find running into my team. Oh, uh, the first one that was actually part of my team is kind of friend of mine, but we kind of spread a little bit just because of who I got for my current team. But uh, uh, she started doing individual images that was going to end up being more or less kind of like a straight-up graphic novel. Yeah. Where you'd have, you'd have a page maybe of X with a followed by an image to kind of help get an image in your head. Uh-huh. And then uh, I believe what it came down to first was is I uh, working on another story uh, and just to give you a heads up, this is not very, this is not really much of a spoiler if you if anyone's been following me on a DA, but the sequel story that I have going on after Vampire Bloodlines is actually called Succubus Tales. Okay. And when I brought that together, I met up with Tara on uh, online because she's got a website that's dedicated to everything that is the succubus, whether it is reviewing costumes, reviewing images, reviewing movies, and she does her own writings too. So, you know, when I showed her that, that's when our our relationship started going at the point where, yeah, she calls me brother, I call her sister, even though, yeah, she's my editor. Uh, You know, she's probably been one of my biggest folks in pushing me forward on this on this journey. Although she would tell you, no, it's all me. So yeah, yeah. But that's a that's a, that's a friendly debate we have left and right. It's always a fun one to have with her. <laughs> uh, then we get to Amy, who initially it was just getting a couple of images from her, but eventually I was talking to her and she said she does pages. Yeah. Uh, when she told me what she was charging for her price range, I said, okay, let's go with it, but it's going to initially start slow. Well, that all changed uh, a couple of years ago when, I don't know if you've turned to tabletop card games, but one of them not, was no. that I played with Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. And at the time, there was a card that was worth, let's just say, over a grand. I don't know if it's still oh. at that price for now. And I pulled it. Pulled it. That's pretty much everything that came off of that card. Straight into the comic book. And so that got done and funded real fast. Oh, wow. was in that card and still selling it. And AV has just been around ever since after that. And she's she and Tara, my main teammates, for reading the comics have been absolutely the best to me, and I dare say both of those uh, ladies have spoiled the ever-loving crap out of me. Right on. <laughs> so you, you met both of them uh, through DeviantArt? DeviantArt for AV, yes. Yeah, she's not there on DA anymore. Oh, okay. Uh, Tara, I want to say... I learned of her through her website. I know she also has a DA page, so I don't remember exactly which one it was first, but I do know okay. I sent her a direct email through her website, and that's how that all got going. All right. Uh, just one more person on the 
team, and yeah. I think it's a person that you enjoy. Uh, Ivy Cosplay, she's been uh, great. Uh, she's been awesome, and I've been ever great, ever grateful for her being my official model for uh, Bianca. Yeah. Uh, that's why a lot of the content that you're seeing right now is some of the shoots that she's been doing for me while trying to help that, keep that content rolling while we wait on the new uh, comics to come around. So yeah, she's been uh, she's been a big help and really awesome. And, and there's not enough words that I can say nice about uh, Ivy that do her justice. I mean, she's just that awesome. Yeah, I think that's uh, how I came about knowing about the comic book. Is, uh, I think that's some the way pictures. a lot of people found that out is through Ivy. Uh, well, while she is my official cosplay model, I've had a couple of others. One of them actually was an official model for a while, but then uh, her name was Kitty Honey. Yeah. She kind of kind of ran into some in her life that was going on and kind of fell apart and it was like okay well you know you do you I'll do me and you know we'll see what I, see if we can meet up somewhere down the road and you know it was about a couple of months ago I was able to get back a hold of her and it did uh I based a character directly off her that's within uh, the Bridgeport Chronicles universe and if you don't mind me plugging right now yeah, go uh, ahead. I got I got Amy going to be working on a 13 page uh, comic book that's going to be featuring uh, the character that's based off a of kitty honey named Jasmine Lawrence and she's a vampire pop star so it's going to go in through her a little bit of origins and just a little bit about here so it's just going to be like a little one shot oh right on and, and just from there it's just kind of grown I mean the Issue one was our better expectations of how that went. Kind of knew that maybe I have something here when Kickstarter 2 went going on. That's when I knew I have a possibility of doing something more with this. All right. Um, so, yeah, I, I noticed you uh, also print through Kablam. And uh, I was wondering uh, how your experience with Kablam printing has been. It personally hasn't been uh, that bad. It's actually been pretty decent. Uh, you know, I had uh, heard extra reviews from people that have, that have been my friends. Some have liked them, some have not. Myself, I've never had a problem. Uh, I know they themselves right now when it comes to printing, just like almost everywhere else, there's a paper shortage. Yeah. Get down, cat. <laughs> yeah, she decides to crawl up on the table where she knows she's not supposed to be. Anywho, gotta love those moments. Uh, but yeah, I was a relationship with Kablam and, and uh, complaints have been pretty good to me so far, so you know, I'm looking forward to continuing to with them. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, I've been printing with them since 09, so it's been a good while. And uh, yeah, I'm happy with they, their... They've been around since what? Uh, was it 08 or has it been later than that? I don't remember. Uh, I don't know. I, did, I came across with them from... Uh, I actually printed through someone else who was not that great. And I'm not even going to say their name because I don't think they exist anymore. And uh, yeah. yeah, my... Uh, my comics pages came back and they looked whitewashed, like really faded. And uh, I, I heard about uh, Kablam through someone else, sent the files to them and they came back exactly how they were supposed to look. So I was happy with them, been with them since. I literally just Google searched and found them and then I was just asking around about them. And they said, you know, people are, like I said, got, I've got mixed reviews. So, but their price range that they were looking for for what I was trying to do was they could afford. Yeah, that's a big factor. Honestly, I, yeah, I, right, and honestly, that's not only been a big factor, but it's also quite helpful too. So it, it's it's why I'm 
seem to continue to still print through them for the comics. Yeah, so um, your comics are a little... Oh, shoot, I should have grabbed another uh, an actual comic to show the size difference, but uh, your comics are a little smaller than uh, right. the standard size, and I was wondering uh, how that came about. And, by the way, I totally love the size of it. It works for me. I appreciate that. Uh, there is a story behind that, and believe it or not, it's straight up accident. Yeah. I mean, when we were initially making the pages, they, I, I would send it to Kablam, and it was, was going to intend to be a normal comic size. Yeah. The problem, though, is they were trying to make it fit to a normal comic size. There were some stretching issues, and Kablam came right out and told me that, yeah, you're going to have some quality issues by they doing it this way, but then they recommended that go the manga route, their manga printing size. All right. And they said it would probably be it'll probably work out that way a lot better. And and I did it that way and got the first uh first printings of them. So I looked at them and I was like, Yeah, these look pretty good. I'm gonna go with it and let's see how it goes and for the most part, you know, I've heard nothing but good things from it because it's you know i think the main thing is because it stands out just because it's yeah the size. yeah it sets it apart from the rest of my collection hey right. and i that uh, you know sometimes standing out in some way shape or form would help that out for being noticed yeah speaking of standing out uh do you have them in local comic shops and uh stuff like that standing out on the shelves uh, no, I did have a couple of places, uh, to just put on the East Coast, and then I haven't gotten, one's out in Myrtle Beach, the other one is where one of my friends and artists that has done some covers for me, uh, Jen, that's, I sent some copies out there, I've been trying to talk to shops but then the shops are yeah the ones that are my local area and what they have uh kind of given to me really hasn't been all been official it's almost like it's going to cost me more just to try to sell it there than it is you know getting a table at a convention or uh, maybe getting like an online store or doing it with, uh doing kickstarters yeah, I've, I've kind of run across that too with my local comic shops. In fact, there's not very, there's not a very good amount of comic shops out here. And, uh, but basically the way I've had it done is I, I give them a stack of comics and as they sell them, I get credit to use in the store. Cause that, that's the best way I've come up with. Yeah, I, I actually would be, they would have paid me for it, but the thing is about what they were paying me for. I'd actually be losing money just because what I'd sell it for, they get oh, they get about fifty percent of it. Yeah, and that's not even that's overall not even breaking even for yeah. me just because the way I have have it initially just set up to be. Oh yeah, but to me it wasn't feasible. Yeah, that's why I went with the uh, the credit route. Like, all right, just put them on your shelf and mark me down for credit when it sells. And so they went that route. And yeah, it paid off for a little while, but it, it fizzled out a little bit. So, uh, all right, let's see. So when are do you have plans to collect them all into a hardback or paperback? My plan here is, and this is going to lead into fifth Kickstarter. Oh, yeah, the fifth Kickstarter for Vampire Bloodlines is there will be a separate fifth issue for those that have already gotten one yeah. through four. four. Uh, instead of doing a bundle to get them all together individually, I am going to be making one through five book. Which yeah. That in itself will have a different cover and it'll go through the entirety the series one through five at that point while having the cover images in there too as well as everything in terms oh, yeah. of who's been credited to making it as well as the thank yous to everyone for the kickstarters so, the big, so that's going to be something i'm looking
looking into now is going to be a project to say the least, trying to figure out how many pages this all is going to be together. Oh yeah. That's cool. So yeah, like I said, um, any plans to make a hardback edition? I don't even know where I, I haven't even started searching yeah, for that yet, but. As of right now, no, doesn't mean plans can change. Oh yeah. You know, it could, may have, it may not. Right now it's just probably going to just stick to paperback and look. A fluke thing happens where I can possibly do it. Right on. And uh, how did you get into comic books? Uh, it started when I was a kid. The very first ones were always uh, Batman. Oh, yeah. Because, because, you know, he's iconic. And at that point, Superman was around too. It's just stuff I like that are more dark and greediness that Batman brought compared to Superman where, you know, he's more of a Boy Scout. And that's my phone going off. Yeah. Oh, must be a telemarketer. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of that too. They're starting to text uh, now. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I, I started off with them and really what got me into that comic scene was, uh, you know, the whole Adam West series. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, seeing that first as a kid. But then growing up, another another one that really helped influence me too was, and this goes to seeing the cartoon first before I went to the comics, it was the the X Men. Yeah. And that 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 there too helped influence a lot of my story elements. Just because you know, I I thought the whole dynamic of having to deal with the persecution though that the mutants have gone through is an element that you know, when it comes to other hero books, you I mean you don't really see it all that much. It's just more or less the goody two shoes with the maybe the exception like I said, Batman. You know, being the all American hero. Yeah. And you never see down uh, a downside to him unless they actually get beat where I look at it and you know mind you, I could be completely wrong on this. You know, the X-Men was always, okay, they're doing out saving the world, but yet the world don't care for them too much. Yeah. And I thought that, to me, is probably more heroic than your, your Supermans or whatever, your Batmans or what, you know, what they were doing. Yeah. All right, so what kind of comics do you like to read currently? Uh, I've gone into the supernatural type more, uh, although I still like the classical detectives, the, uh, you know, and uh, the action ones. I mean, those are the ones I've generally been uh, interested in more in terms of comics. I mean, just uh, Dynamite has started out one that I'm going to be looking into, and that's uh, Memphis' sister, Draculina. That was going to be... Oh, yeah. I've wanted to learn more about her as a character, and they've got her own series coming out here. I think they just dropped it here not too long ago. So, I know I'm really itching to have that comic come in the mail so I can read that sucker. Yeah, you getting the uh, cosplay covers on those? I haven't seen them, uh, honestly, yet. Oh, yeah? Uh, if, uh, if I pull them up, you know, maybe I would, would like to. Uh, just have to uh, see how my finances kind of yeah. hold up for the time being. So, when you write your uh, first draft, do you start with an outline or bullet point or kind of skeleton? Or do you just dive in and I see know. where it goes? I make uh, notes first. Yeah. And after I make my notes... I will make a rough draft of a script. Uh, so as I'm writing it out, I'm putting down there, okay, page one, this is going to have, for example, maybe five panels on that page. And then I'm writing down exactly what's going on in that panel. And as I go through with the rough draft and getting it done, that's when I 
send it to Tara. Yeah. But me and her sit down together and we go over the script like a through a uh, with a fine tooth comb. I mean, yeah. we go over that pretty because you know rough drafts. You tend to have typos, uh, some grammar issues, and maybe some plot elements that don't make sense. Um, with her, it's been, you know, I've been lucky to have her to be able to help me out with that, to say the least, and that, that in itself is, a, a, to me, I, I find it a fun process. Yeah. I, I enjoy that. And once that's all done, send it to AV to, or, uh, illustrating, and she'll send me the sketch. Uh, if I, if I myself like it, it's good to go. I'll just say good to go. Otherwise, I'll share it with, uh, Tara, get her, get, get her thoughts on it, and everything goes back through that whole team way. I end up being more of a central part of communication between the team, just because yeah. Tara's in Canada and AV is overseas in Europe. Oh, man. So there's a bit of a time issue and connection issue to get with them both. Yeah. All right. And uh, do you have favorite characters to write, or are they all your favorites? Uh, a big time favorite has been Bianca, just because I've had her as a character for so long. Yeah. She's been the central focal point of my stories, even back on DA. Uh, she's been favorite to write for uh right now this moment if i have a second favorite without any spoiling anything just because uh, i don't want to give away oh, yeah. a, for issue four what she no uh, no just what she is yeah uh sophia oh uh she's been she's been a she's been another one that i've had fun writing for and one that i know tara's likes quite a bit too so yeah that's cool all right. Um, let's see. Sorry. So, uh, do you see, do you have a big story reveal in your head coming up that you're just antsy and excited about uh, the readers getting to? <laughs> you know, I have a message to give to everyone on that from Tara. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but. In all seriousness, yes, this is all going to come to a, a big climax. Exactly what it is, you're going to have to stay tuned and see what happens. Uh, I, I don't want to give into everything that I have oh, yeah. planned in store for the stories. But yeah, just know that there is going to be an important climax coming, yes. Oh yeah, that uh, that last cliffhanger with the uh, the press conference going bad, that that just had me like, oh my gosh, when is the next Kickstarter coming out? <laughs> yeah, that was a combination of me and Tara getting together, like, okay, how do we build to make this next issue where you pull them in for that right away? And honestly, with every issue so far, I think with the exception of issue one there's been what i've understood from people talking back to me it's the cliffhangers that keep them coming back the cliffhangers oh, yeah. are pretty good oh yeah you gotta you gotta keep that carrot in front of them keep them moving right keep them coming back and that's that comes down to a great team that's helping out helping out to help guide the story so, do you have a specific place where you like to write, or can you just work on your book anywhere? Generally, I generally just work on it at my small, tiny apartment. I mean, I got really no specific place where I write. It will take notes anywhere. Yeah. It comes down to what I want to do for notes, but in terms of writing, I, I generally just my computer at home and pull up a a word uh, processor and just start writing out the script from there. All right. And uh, do you work 
did you go to any schooling for uh, writing comics or it just you just winging it learning as you go it's all been initially a hobby so it's just winging it going as I go I didn't go to school for writing didn't go to school for English of any kind it you know I initially went to college to be you know this is me being a kid my initial first part of it was college to be a gaming designer oh yeah and I found out that was for me way over my head for my knowledge uh knowledge of it it's just okay I'm gonna go into something that I knew a little bit more of and oh, yeah. because I was playing college football you know I, I knew when it comes to physical activities I do uh physical education well, that ended up kind of fizzling out because I ran into ran into a situation where a family tragedy that kind of made it so it was a rough spot for a while for me. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll, say, I'll say this: I probably spent better part of half a year mourning the passing of my grandfather. Yeah, but that was, that was a tragedy that happened and. That was the main reason that kind of made my uh, physical, physical physical education aspirations as well. And then that's when I started working with the uh, kids in the, the boarding school setting. Yeah. Hmm. And I'm, I'm sure all that will factor into your writing and uh, help you improve. I, I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, life experience, though, like basically, uh, it makes it easier to write if you've lived through something. And it's also inspirational at times too. That helps that helps out with that fellow for narratives. Yeah. So back to Kickstarter. Uh, do you enjoy crowdfunding? Um. Generally, yes. I mean, it shows me that it, there's a, a fan backing that likes what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, I know the last one before this had some, uh, what, was, what was this called? Some hardships that I made some lessons. Yeah. Very valuable lessons. And you now I'm still learning as I'm doing this because I. You know, even I've done, even that I've done this for a year, I'm still a complete and total noob to everything within the comic business, the Kickstarter business, trying to get things going off that way. So I'm, yeah. you know, I, I just ask for people's patience. I'm learning and I'm still trying to get the hang of everything yet. Oh, but yeah. I do enjoy the crowdfunding, the crowd interactions when I'm talking to them through the funding and kind of speaking to them about it when I get uh, comments or questions about it through PMs or oh, yeah. stuff on the, on, the, on the general comics part of it. Yeah, and the, the uh, oh, what is it called? The updates. Yeah, when you send out an update and uh, a lot of information, a lot of comments on that. Right. Um, even, even if you just get regular comments on the page where it just shows you the details of it and doesn't have to just be where you're putting out updates just yeah all comments that you get on it those are those are uh fun to uh, respond to but also can be and that's where i learned a lot of my uh what to do and what not to do is through you yeah. know what they're suggesting in those comment bars saying hey hey you know x is not adding up you need to we do a little bit of Z here, and I'm using X and Z as variables. Yeah. As I am, every everything is everything is still new to me, and still trying to figure it out to the best of my ability as well as grow. And uh, so you, okay, that answered my other question. So I'll move on to. Uh, so have you uh, done any tables at Comic Cons or any other shows like uh, schools? Only one that I did was my first one, and that was uh, Alicon in uh, Fargo, North Dakota. That was the first weekend in October, I believe. Yeah. Uh, was able to uh, talk to the people who 
we were on the show there, and I was very lucky to get Ivy to come up there for that. So I actually got to meet her there, as well as her right. husband, who is absolutely an amazing guy, too. If you ever get a chance to meet or talk to him, he's absolutely amazing. But that was my first experience through there. My dad came up there to help out with the table because I had yeah. no clue about, you know, I don't, you know, no clue. Was, you know, okay, what do I need to use the bathroom? I just don't want to leave. Yeah. yeah. Anything, any information or anything out there for someone to just grab, I would like to have someone there just kind of keep an eye on it if I had to take a step away. And, you know, he's been great, uh, gracious enough to help me out on that for that first one. Uh, mm-hmm. I was asked to do a couple of them, but just because of my work schedule, I haven't been able to work out. Uh, yeah. Uh, and that just comes to working at a hospital and how the hospital needing staffing here and there. So I, unless I put in for vacation, which my vacation grows very slowly. Ooh, yeah. Uh, I I gotta kind of be being choosy with how I. Uh, with, with, with the ones that I go to, which I will say this, I will be returning to ValleyCon in Fargo here. Let me look up the dates here again there. It's, uh, I'll say it starts September 28th and goes into October 2nd is when the dual dates are. I might be off on the start date. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, if anyone wants to no more about ValleyCon. They got a, they got a website. They've got a, a Facebook and Twitter pages, and they have keep updated regularly, especially with some guests that are going to be there. I know this last one they had uh, Sean Patrick Flannery there oh, yeah. for you know uh, Blue Dot Saints. He was there. He was uh, he was amazing to talk to there. My first one and just kind of picked his brain a little bit of information of kind of how how it come to he you know, he does his his writing for scripts and trying to get it to, to print and then he says it takes you know, I learned from him that it takes quite a bit of time just to get something to roll. So yeah. Yeah, man, am I looking to try to maybe do something where it goes into a movie or animated series, you know, for, that, that, that's just me hoping way too far. I'm oh, like, yeah. Uh, if it happens, it happens. I'm not going to look that far ahead. Right now, I'm happy where I'm at with what I'm doing. And, well, but there is just learning some valuable lessons and some getting some information together to put in a toolbox, so to speak. Oh, yeah. Well, it sounds like uh, one of my questions was going to be, uh, so I'm over here in Utah. And we have a little con we do every year. And I was kind of hoping you'd be over here one day that I could meet you. But it doesn't sound like you have enough time off to be able to come over. You know, you know it actually just depends. I've been to Utah before, thanks to my other job. And oh. Utah is a, it's a beautiful state. I would have no problems going there again for maybe, say, like uh, for the convention there. It, like I said, it, it's going to come down to... When it is scheduling, and if I yeah. can generally have the time off, or if I have to, you know, save up or trade or you know, all the other stuff when it comes to getting the time off. Yeah, I, I'm a little spoiled in that department. I've worked at the same place since '02, so I grow vacation pretty, pretty hard, highly. <laughs> right, so that goes that grows pretty quick for you since you've been there for so long. Yeah. So, um, all right, let's see. Do you have any con goals someday, like uh, specific places you'd like to do a con at? Oh, I know Jen had asked me about going to Vegas in June. That's looking more and more like it. I can't do it just because, one, I got to have the time to. I just aren't able to fund myself to go down there and back. Uh, but I know some of the places I've never been to before is what I would like to go to for console, like the Las Vegas, the oh, yeah. Chicago's, uh, and it doesn't have to really be the big, huge ones. I'd be okay with going to the small ones because I figure you know, the small ones are just as good as getting to the big ones.
off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Denver Inc., or I think they call it Dink for Denver Independent Con, is one I, on my bucket mm-hmm. list. <laughs> yeah, the, learning about all the cons and what they're at, it's, that kind of itself is still new to me. So yeah. I've been having some friends help me out, pointing at me and tell me to look into this. And, you know, I have been looking into them. It's just overall, for the most part, just going to come down to time off, being able to do it, or, you know, helpful funding to get down there to be able to do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a big one, too. So have you? you ever met anyone because of comic books even not either online or in person that has made you so glad you got into comics my obvious answer is I yeah I mean, she, oh yeah she, she a big part of it she said a big part of it but she was the main reason why I wanted to do cons because the people like her that have been so nice and so kind at I really wanted to be able to meet her, talk with her, and be able to get to hang out. Because me, I'm more of a, I would say, kind of a homebody, the guy that kind of stands off, you know, and kind of able to break out of my shell a little bit. These cons was really part of what made it probably some of the best times of my life. Uh, Am I looking uh trying to think who else i met some artists there one of them i know has done i can't think of his name but he's done some covers he's from the cities area here in uh, minnesota he's done covers for dc uh and uh he's done a vampirella cover yeah and, and i know i want to Oh, Dave, uh, I think it's Dave Nguyen is his name. Okay. I yeah. want to, I want to, I want to, I want to ask him about, uh, possibly doing a cover for me one day. Oh yeah. Just because he, he was so awesome talking to me and what, what, what he's learned through trying to get to some of the bigger comic promotions with some of the, some of their, uh, material and, it took to possibly you know, what it took to get to that, that level and you know it's those people that have been so kind to give me that advice and give me that knowledge to put in the two bucks to have there is really probably the most important part of those comps that I've been a part of to uh, find out about. Yeah. So um where are the best places that people can find you to follow you online? To find uh, Vampire Bloodlines? Uh, I've got uh, an actual website uh, called ChristopherChronicles.com. Uh, I'm on Facebook as Vampire uh, Christopher Chronicles. Uh, for some odd reason, they wouldn't let me just use Christopher Chronicles, so I had to put Vampire in front of it. Instagram and uh, Twitter are both Christopher uh, Chronicles. Uh, yeah, I see, yeah, I'm on there as uh, Bridgeport Chronicles as well. All right, and uh, yeah, obviously the Kickstarter is the best place that they can find you right now because uh, you have a catch up tier on your uh, a catch up level on your uh, Kickstarter where they could get issues one through four. Right, and that the catch up ones are usually one of the better one, best ones that I have people getting as well as. The, those that are the cover collectors. Oh, so yeah. I've I, I done uh, those where I bundled those up. And, you know, this will go into the whole add ons bit of it. I'm still learning the add ons, and that's why I've just yeah. kind of just generally bundled them up separately. And I just figured it would be easier that way, easier to keep track. But hey, I think eventually I'll probably get to the point where, yeah, I need to do the add ons. Yeah. I got to, I just got to figure those out. Yeah. Well, it's been a real treat talking you, talking with you today as a fan and a creator of your work. And, uh, and before I go, I have some random questions I'd like you to have, answer. Uh, what have you been watching lately? What have I been watching lately? Uh, anyway. Uh, I've been going back and forth on Castlevania for the anime. 
Yeah, man, it shows, but re- really, um, generally, my TV time has been that or Fortune Fire or NCIS. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, I know, I'm not watching much in terms of what's on the TV. It just comes down to what I can get off the streaming services. And uh, one final question. What is your favorite superpower and why? Superpower, huh? Yeah. Well, I think oh, that's a tough one, but uh, yeah, the one the one I can probably say that would be easier for me. I be fun to have, just have a totally healing ability because oh yeah, you you say like you get a cut and then all of a sudden healed instantly, or you get sick and it within minutes or hours it's healed, you know, just yeah. that whole instant, instantaneous healing. I mean, there's some aspects of that healing part where someone loses a limb and within a day it grows back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, think that, I think that there too also goes down, down to help out longevity too, I think. Oh yeah. You know, you look at Nuts. Sorry, guys, bear with me for a minute. So, uh, shoot, while I'm waiting for that to uh, come back, I will do a little self-promotion ad here. Uh, As you know, um, I make a comic book called Peter Pan the Vampire, and you can find Peter Pan the Vampire on IndiePlanet.com. You can buy the hard copies for $4, or you could digitally download it to your phone or tablet laptop for free. Issues 1, 2, and 3 are completely free to read if you download them to your phone. And uh, yeah, still waiting on this. So, um, and you could also find me on on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram as Rentnarb Studios Comics. And also on redbubble.com as uh, Gary Brantner. But if you Google Rentnarb in the search history of uh, Redbubble, you will find lots of things that have my Red and Arbalian on them. And come on. Uh, yeah. Dang. It was so close to just wrapping up the whole video, too. I don't know why it suddenly froze up. Shoot. So um, there, right here, are, where are the covers to Vampire Bloodlines? Um, when I was during the recording of this video, uh, I don't know what happened. It did. It just gave me a blank gray square here, and so all of the video that we recorded was lost. So unfortunately. The audio version is the only way I can upload this, and uh, I hope it was okay with you guys. Oh, man, what is happening? There's no one home, so it should just... It should just play automatically. I don't know what's going on. Mm. 
Shoot. Yeah, I've got a lot to learn about how to uh, how to do this whole video thing and uh, very low budget, all that fun stuff. Um, yeah, shoot. Uh, I will be putting together an episode of my reviews pretty soon. And so if you have a Kickstarter that you want me to know about, hit me up on that and drop it in the links on my Twitter or message me on Facebook. Drop me some links to your Kickstarter and I will check it out. I will give you a shout out on my show during the campaign corner of my show. And uh, wow, this should be really playing by now. What's going on here? Let's see if I could close all these other windows. And uh, yeah, shoot. So yeah, I originally recorded the video in Discord with uh, Christopher Mayer, but unfortunately it was lost. I don't know what happened. At the very beginning, I think I struggled with some buttons on it, and that might be where it got hung up. don't know what this is. Play, come on. Oh, shoot. It looks like uh, I might have lost the last end of it. And uh, I will have to wrap it up here, I guess. Um, shoot. So... Thank you for listening to my interview with Christopher Mayer about Vampire Bloodlines and the Bridgeport Chronicles. And uh, do check it out on Kickstarter right now. It is going until, oh shoot, where's my notes? I don't have notes on this one yet. Bridge, I think it's going till February 18th. It is going till February 20th and it is 24 pages, manga sized. And this story will be uh, about the the aftermath of the uh, uh, news conference that I was telling you about. Um, they there was a lot of stuff going down in that one, and uh, it was really really cool to leave on a cliffhanger that just blew me away. And so I can't wait to see what's going on on the, with that one. 24 pages, awesome artwork by AV, and uh, they're doing a great job on that, writing and editing, and uh, exciting stuff. So yeah, check out the Kickstarter, back it, get all four issues, and uh, you will not be sorry on that one. And I can't wait till the uh, collected edition comes out, but that is a good time off, I think, for when that will be arriving. And I'm going to stop talking right now.